Hey guys, hope y'all are doing well today. So today we're going to be talking about lesson 7.4, which is about transformations of exponential and logarithmic functions. So transformations, this should be ringing huge bells in your head at this point. We have been talking about transformations and talking about transformations and talking about transformations all year long, right? We've transformed linear equations and quadratic equations and uh, polynomial equations. We've been transforming and transforming and transforming functions. Um, you know, we've been talking about A, H, and K, you know, horizontal and vertical translations. We're talking about horizontal and vertical stretches and shrinks. We've been talking about reflections across the x-axis and reflections across the y-axis. We've been talking about those things all year. And I know I've been talking to my classes, my, uh, especially to you folks that have been in live and on videos um, about how, you know, these things repeat over and over. And once we get them down, you know, we get to kind of enjoy it because we already know all the basics of this. And so that's how this lesson's gonna be. This one ought to be pretty easy for you. And uh, I'm gonna try to go through it fairly quickly. So, but as we talk about transforming exponential functions, you gotta remember what an exponential function looks like. Okay, uh, here's a basic f of x equals two to the power of x, parent function. And remember, where is the x term? Because, you know, you remember things like, you know, with like horizontal translations, you know, it's always that X minus H, like we we'll, we saw in the linear and we saw in the quadratic. And it's, uh, you know, for the horizontal stretches and shrinks, that coefficient that goes in front of the X. Um, reflections across, um, you know, the, uh, the Y axis, that those horizontal reflections, all of that stuff happens around the X uh, term. So where is the x term in an exponential function? It's up there, right? It's up there in the exponent area up here. So when we remember that, when we think about that, that kind of informs us about how these exponential functions and these transformations of them are going to look. So here's a chart now. Folks, we've seen this, you've seen this in practically every chapter this year as we've gone through it. There's those, you know, those six things, horizontal translations, vertical translations, reflections over the x-axis, reflections over the y-axis, horizontal stretches and shrinks, and vertical stretches and shrinks. Those, those six, I, I think of reflections over x and y, I separate them, but you get the idea. That's the same chart we've seen in, in practically every chapter of the book. And the function notation is exactly the same. None of this has changed, has changed since we first started talking about uh, the transformations. The f of x minus h, you know, there again, you think about in an exponential function, where is that x? It's up there in the exponent. So where is that x minus h going to be? It's going to be up there in the exponent area. Um, the reflections over you know, uh, over the X and the Y axis, you know, where is that gonna be for that reflection there? Yeah, up there with the X. And then that horizontal stretch and shrink, where is that gonna be? Uh, it's gonna be grouped there with the X, all of those things up in the um, exponent area. Now the vertical stuff, hey, you know, that's plus K that's added to the end of the function. The reflection over the X axis, that's the, negative in front of the function, that vertical stretch or shrink, that's that coefficient being multiplied you know, by the function, multiplying it times the function. So those are gonna hang out in places that we're used to seeing them. So as we apply them to some function examples, so if you take, you know, hey, f of x is uh, two to the power of x, and then this second function, you know, the, the starting function is 10 to the power of X. Then what does it look like if we want to do a horizontal translation three units to the right? Well, it's X minus three. And where does that happen? It happens up there in the exponent area. It happens up in the exponent area. That's where horizontal translations happen. You know, if we want to go two to the left, we do, you know, X minus negative two or x plus two, it's up there in the exponent area. 
again, up here in the exponent area. So these horizontal translations that we've been doing all the time, x minus h, doing them all year with the function notation like this, just remember that the x is now up in the exponent area because that's where the x is in an exponential function. So those are going to be up there in the exponent area as well. Now the verticals, remember we always tack those on to the end of the function, the plus k. So, you know, if the function, the original f of x function is two to the power of x, and I wanna go five up, I just add the plus five at the end. Notice that's not up in the exponent area. That would be an h. The k is down in the main body of the function line, and we just do the plus five, or over here, the plus five. If we wanna go one unit down, you know, plus negative one, it'd be minus one, minus one. So you see that the Ks are working just like they typically do. We're tack tacking them on fronts and backs of equations, depending on what it is, if it's a negative sign, uh, 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 scale factors for vertical stretches or shrinks or these vertical translations, then they're getting tacked on at the front or the back of the function. But um, the horizontal stuff is happening up with the exponent. Reflections here over the y-axis, you see that negative sign is up there in the exponent area. So now I get a negative x in the exponent area. But if I want to flip over the x-axis, if I want to reflect over the x-axis, that negative f of x, then that's going to go in the, at the front of the function, in front of the, the base here. Uh, of the exponential function, the two or the 10. Um, vertical stretches and shrinks, I'm gonna skip down here. I'll come back to the horizontals in a second. Um, if I wanna do a vertical stretch by three, that goes you know, in front of the function, gets multiplied by the entire function, three times the entire function, which in this case is two to the power of x, or three times the entire function, which in this case is 10 to the power of x. Um, you know, if I want to do a stretch and a reflection, you know, you know then I go with the negative three. You know, so we're combining the, the reflection over the X and the vertical stretch with the negative three there. And then the same thing with the uh, vertical shrinks, the compressions, we have a fractions less than one, uh, the negative adds a reflection. Okay, so these work just like, like they've been working in every function we've studied. Over here, now the horizontal stretches and shrinks. Remember the rules about this. If you tell me I'm going to shrink by a scale factor of one half, a horizontal shrink, I've got to use the reciprocal of one half, which is two, and then that goes up in the exponent area. It's that little two right up there, or that little two right up there. And if I say I'm going to do a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of two, again, I'm going to use the reciprocal and so that's a half. And so, you know, one half X, or as they write it here, X over two, which is equivalent to one half X. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples here. Example one, they give us uh, uh, this, describe the transformation of F of X equals one half to the power of X. What transformation is represented by the new equation G of X one half to the power of x minus four. So going back a second, you know, if you think about the chart, what are we doing here? Well, that's a that's a, a plus k plus a negative k, obviously, the minus four. So what does that make that? It makes it a vertical translation down four units. Okay. And we see the graph of that from F down here to G. Hey folks, just a quick reminder, when you're drawing graphs on your paper, you gotta have an X and Y axis, you need to label them. You need to have a scale or a grid, that's the little tick marks, or in this case, they're full grid marks because this is more like graph paper. But you gotta have those, you gotta have some numbers, you gotta have the scales, you know, the tick marks numbered, your scale needs to be consistent on the x-axis and consistent on the y-axis, you need all those things to have a real graph, okay, and then accurately plotted points. So there we see the translation uh, down four units from there 
down to here. Okay. All right. Example number two. So in this one, we're asked to describe the transformation of um, here one with a natural base f of x equals e to the power of x. What does this represent? What does this new equation g of x represent? What type of transformation of this is it? Well, we see two things happening. We see instead of x, it's now x plus three. So I know things that are grouped with the x like that, they're added or subtracted to the x term. That's a horizontal translation. X plus three is X minus negative three. So that's negative three. That's to the um, you know, left on the graph. So I know that's a horizontal translation. The plus two, that's my K. That's a positive. So I know that's a vertical translation up. Okay. And so, you know, we put it in those forms. My H is negative three. That's going to make me move to the left on the graph three units, my K is positive two, that's gonna make me go up two units on the graph. And so that's exactly what I would say. It's a translation three units to the left. I would probably say it's a horizontal translation three units to the left. And then I would say it's a vertical translation two units up. And we see it in the graph. We see the, the movement left and we see the movement up. All right, now let's talk about transforming log functions. We've talked about transforming exponential functions. Let's talk about transforming log functions here for a minute. Again, type of transform transformations have not changed. They're the same. Again, the notation is exactly the same. And that's one of the beauties of these transformations throughout our course. And once you know what the type of transformations are, you always know them. Once you know what the notation looks like, you always know it, okay? So again, here, we're gonna think about, hey, okay, where's the X gonna show up in the logarithm? You know, so where, where does that happen? So the beginning functions are um, F of X equals the log of X, and then F of X equals log base two of X. These are the two examples they're using. So the original function was just the log of x. So if you want to do a horizontal translation uh, to the right, you know, if it was the log of x, which you know, means, makes it a base 10, a common log, because it's log base 10 of x was the, the f function, the original. So the g function, the transformed one, I do x minus 4. Notice we do put the parentheses around that because this area for the logarithm is a value, right? Base is an area, this is an area, and then whatever it equals, that's an area. So I do put parentheses around this, which we do all the time with the X stuff anyway. So that's not really surprising, okay? If the base is, if it's not a common log, if it's not a base 10 log, if it's like base two, log base two, it doesn't affect the base. We don't change the base. The X is, is right here in the main line. And that's where my minus four goes. Hey, even if it's a natural log, a uh, log base E and an LN, a natural log, even if it's a natural log, a log base E, we are still, you know, up here, X, you know, the natural log of X becomes the natural log of X minus four. Same thing if we wanted to move um, to the uh, left on the um, function, then you know, the log of X, I need to move to the left seven units, you know, X minus a negative seven, of course, becomes X plus seven. So the log of X plus seven, or the log base two of X plus seven, or the natural log of X plus seven. But do notice we are putting the X plus seven, the X minus four in parentheses there. So you wanna, wanna make sure you're doing that. Why do I want to make sure we're putting those parentheses? Because look what happens when we talk about vertical translation. Same, remember the log of X, and I want to make a vertical translation up three. So now it becomes the log of X plus three. So how do I tell that apart from this? Obviously the parentheses are the key here. The parentheses tell me that that's minus four is grouped with the X, that makes it an H. 
Here it's tacked on after the logarithm. That makes it a K. Can both of those be combined into one equation? Absolutely. If I wanted to take this equation and then translate it also vertically up three units, I would have the log of x minus four in parentheses, and then after the parentheses, I would put the plus three. Okay, so absolutely can you know have both going on at the same time. But if you want an H, you're going to use those parentheses to group it with the X. If it's a K, you're going to tack it on to the entire logarithm at the end. So it does not get the parentheses treatment. Okay. All right. Same thing here with the reflections. If we're going to do a, a horizontal reflection, a reflection over the Y axis, which moves you know, this way, which is horizontally, if we're going to do that, um, we're going to group that negative sign with the X. And we do it here and we do it here. Okay. And that makes it very clear that that goes with the X. And that way, if I put something else, if I had a horizontal translation with it as well, it would all be grouped inside those parentheses. If I'm going to do a, a vertical reflection, a reflection across the Y axis, which moves up and down, then that negative goes in front of the logarithm whether it's a common log, base two, natural log, type of log, doesn't matter. Um, let's talk about horizontal stretches and shrinks. Just like here, just like here, those scale factors are gonna go inside parentheses with the logarithm. And in this case, of course, with the horizontal stretch and shrink in front of the X, it's still inside those parentheses that's grouping that X term. Uh, stuff together. Uh, again, we're using with horizontal stretches and shrinks, we're using the reciprocal of the scale factor. So it's a shrink by one fourth. We're going to use its reciprocal, which is four. And that's what's going to go in here. That's what goes here. That's what goes here. Notice it doesn't affect the base, whether it went into base two as opposed to a common log, doesn't change the natural log. It's changing that X term. Stretch by three. Again, we're going to use the reciprocal of three over one, which is one over three. And again, we're going to group that with the X with parentheses. Okay. Now, when we're doing the vertical stretches and shrinks, obviously those coefficients are you know, being multiplied times the function. So it is going to go out there in front of the logarithm. So you'll notice in all of these cases, it's in front of the logarithm. If you have a uh, vertical stretch and you're going to add a reflection over the x-axis, that's when it becomes a negative number. But again, both of those are in front of the logarithm. Okay, we see it also with the shrinks here. All right, let's look at another example here. So here's an example um, where we are starting with f of x equals the log of x. And the transformed function, the g of x function, is the log of negative one half x. So we got to ask, hey, what's different about here and here? Obviously, the negative and the one half. We see they are inside the parentheses. So the bells and whistles should be going off in our heads saying, oh, those are horizontal changes because they're grouped with the x. The negative signs are reflection. Horizontal reflection that you know moving left and right that's across the y axis, and that one half is a horizontal uh, stretch or shrink. I remember I've got to use the reciprocal of that number to figure out the scale factor, and the reciprocal of one half is two, and that makes it a stretch because two is bigger than one. Okay, so those are the things I'm going to go through in my head as I look at that, and then I'm going to identify okay, it's got a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of two, and it's got the reflection across the y-axis. And there we see the resulting graphs of that. All right, one more example here. So let's look at the B example. I got the log base one half of x, and then the new transformed function, the g of x. You notice we always are giving a new function a new name. If I, re, if I named this f of x, it would be incredible confusion because we're saying two different things are the same thing. 
we know they're not really equal, right? So we always have to make sure the transformed function gets a new name. It's g of x, and it's two times the log uh, base one half of x plus four. So what things have been added, what have changed? We've got the two in front, and then nothing's changing about the base. That's not our, our deal. And then it's this x plus four. So the x plus four is grouped with the x. So again, I know that's a horizontal thing. And I know it's supposed to be x minus h. So that makes my h x minus negative four. And it's a horizontal translation to the left. I've got this two here out front that I know is a vertical uh, stretch or shrink. And because it's greater than one, it's a stretch. So a vertical stretch by scale factor of two. And I've identified uh, I've identified the pieces. So I say, hey, it's a, a horizontal translation for you to the left. It's a vertical stretch by a scale factor of two. And I can draw the graphs. OK. So there are a couple uh, more examples in your book. Examples five and six have to do with uh, uh, trans, uh, translating from the graph and you know, figuring out, uh, OK, here, what's the, the function? So I'm going to let you look at those two on your own. I think uh, examples five and six, you can understand after having us having spent this much time on these. Um, and if you can't, you can ask uh, your teacher, ask uh, myself and Mr. Johnny, and uh, we're happy to talk to you about them some more. But I think you guys are pretty on the ball at this point, and you can probably see those, look at those, and, and get those yourself. All right. Hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.